This is a picture of my uncle, Aron Balin, in 1961, when he testified at the trial of Adolf Eichmann. I am reading from the transcript of that trial. Did you and your mother and wife survive? No. You reached Auschwitz and underwent a selection? Yes. The doctor who conducted the selection was Dr. Rode. What unit did he belong to? He was an SS doctor with the death head symbol on his cap. Perhaps it would be of interest to point out that while the selection was going on, he had a dog at his side and he whistled the aria from Rigoletto, La Donna Mobile. About 150 men and 150 women were selected from the first rows. The remainder were sent off in a group without undergoing selection. Large trucks came to take them away, amongst them my mother as well. Where were they sent to? They were sent along the road, which as I subsequently learned when I was at Auschwitz, led to Birkenau, which was the road leading to the crematorium but I had a better sign. Three or four hours after I entered the camp, I saw these trucks through the barbed wire fence. We were then still on the other side of the barbed wire fence. We had not yet gone inside the camp. I saw these trucks returning with coats, and I saw my mother's coat. I then understood that she was no longer alive. There is one other matter I want to mention here. When I was with my mother, she said to me, she was an observant Jewess, she said that she would pray for my survival, but she told me I would have to promise to take an oath. That was how she put it to me. She said it in Russian so that the SS men should not understand, because there were some of them who understood a little Yiddish that if I should remain alive, I should go to Palestine. And I promised her, and I kept my promise. I fulfilled this obligation, and I think I owe this observation to all the mothers who were taken before their time, and to all the children who were snatched from their mothers for annihilation. You were transferred to a certain block and there you were divided up according to occupations. Yes, they had a standard list there in which, as a rule, all the prominent functions were in the hands of professional criminals and men guilty of serious crimes. They were Germans who had been in jail, who had been sentenced to imprisonment, and who had been released for concentration camp duties. They had a prepared list and classified the new arrivals according to this list, into members of the liberal professions on the one hand and criminal elements arriving there on the other hand. Those who were not members of the liberal professions and who were not criminals were divided equally into two groups. Those who were criminals and were able to prove that they had spent some time in prison, for example, had broken into safes or stolen, were given these duties. What were these duties? distributors of food, room attendants, and so on. I did not know about that and said I was a doctor. This served to my disadvantage, together with the whole group of teachers, of writers, and actors. Apparently there was a whole standard list, and we always received the worst tasks. Hard labor, for example, cleaning the toilets or carrying food. Carrying food in Birkenau involved mortal danger, for there was no meal where the commando reported to the kitchen and where the man in charge, whose name was Sillinger, did not kill two or three people with a huge wooden spoon used to stir the food in the pots. He would pull it out and strike people on the head. This work 
was given to us.